Hi friends, welcome to biologyexamsforyou.com. Today let us understand five steps of gene cloning in detail. Let's begin with the word gene cloning. Cloning means making exact copies. This is a sheep. So these are clones of sheep or genetically identical copies. Now we have cloned sheep that is Dolly. Similar to that, gene cloning is making copies of that gene or a DNA fragment like this. Gene cloning or molecular cloning is a process of making many identical copies of a DNA fragment or a gene. It has many downstream applications such as sequencing. If we are studying this gene for the first time, we need to sequence to understand the structure of that gene, then mutagenesis to study the function of that gene, then expression of a protein if that gene is coding some pharmaceutically important proteins like insulin. At the end of this video, you will be able to understand the steps in gene cloning, what are the sources of gene, what is a vector restriction enzymes and lysis, different gene transfer methods and how recombinant colonies are selected using antibiotic resistance medium. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing this channel and that would be a great help from your side. First, let us enlist the steps in gene cloning. It starts with identification and isolation of gene of interest or DNA fragment to be cloned. Step two is insertion of this isolated gene in a suitable vector. Step three, introduction of this vector into a suitable host. The process is called as transformation. Step four is the selection of transformed host cell. And finally, step five is the multiplication or expression of the introduced gene in the host. We will be discussing all these steps and associated techniques in between within 5 to 10 minutes. Step 1 is identification and isolation of gene of interest. From where we get this gene of interest? The major source is genomic library. If we are studying this gene for the first time, we need to construct a genomic library. Let's take insulin as an example. Human insulin gene, as we know, it's made up of two chains, A chain and B chain. So there are A gene and B gene that is coding A chain and B chain. So suppose this is a clone containing this A chain gene and this is a clone containing this B chain gene. The other sources are cDNA library, chemical synthesis and PCR amplification. Both these, this chemical synthesis and PCR amplification is possible only if the gene is well known. So if you are studying a gene for the first time, we need to construct a genomic library. So genomic library is a collection of cloned segments of DNA containing at least one copy of every gene of that organism under study. Suppose this is a genomic library of a virus that contains one, two, three, four, five genes. So each of this colony contains a gene of that virus. So this can be called as a genomic library of that virus or collection of cloned segments of DNA containing at least one copy of every gene of that virus. So we have given a detailed video on the making of genomic library. You can refer that for more. Now step two is insertion of this isolated gene into a suitable vector. So this, the most common vector is the plasmid vector. So a vector is any DNA molecule to which our gene is inserted and this vector should replicate inside the host also. Simply, it is the desired DNA carrier or the vehicle that carries our gene of interest to the host. Let's understand something more about this vector. As you see, these are different vectors, starting with plasmid with an insert size of 6 to 15 kb, then phage vectors derived from bacteriophages, then cosmid, which is a hybrid vector that is having cosite of lambda phage, and plasmid, then back and yak with huge insert size of 300 kb in the case of back and 2000 kb in the case of yak. So from this picture, it is evident that we have different types of vector to accommodate large DNA inserts. Take the case of human genome project. So our genomes are very massive. So we need to have vectors with large insert size to accommodate these DNA fragments for cloning. So that's why we use this YAC and BAC for human genome project. YAC was later replaced with BAC bacterial artificial chromosome because of stability issues. So we have different kinds of vectors because to accommodate large 
DNA inserts or large DNA fragments. So we have given a detailed video on different types of vectors. You can refer that for more. The link is in the description. Now the second part is we have human insulin gene. Let's take human insulin gene as an example. Let's take human insulin gene as an example. Suppose this A gene gene. So we are making a cut in this vector using restriction enzyme. So let us understand what is a restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes are enzymes that cuts double-stranded DNA molecule at unique sites called restriction sites. Let's take an example. So this is ECOR1, the restriction enzyme from E. coli. So this is a restriction site, GAATTC. So whenever this GAATTC is present in a sequence, this enzyme will make a cut and this cut pattern yields a sticky end. So from here, you can see there are AATT, single-stranded unpaired regions. So that is called as sticky end. A cut that generates single-stranded unpaired ends are called as sticky ends. So these sticky ends are very much preferred in recombinant DNA technology. As you see, this is the plasmid. We cut that plasmid using this ECOR1. So there will be a sticky end. Let me zoom in this. So as you see, we cut this plasmid. There will be a sticky end in the case of plasmid. So this DNA fragment is also having this sticky end. So this unpaired region will easily form hydrogen bond. So we can have a recombinant molecule very easily. That is why restriction enzymes that provides sticky ends are preferred in recombinant DNA technology. Now we have a restriction enzyme. We have cut the plasmid using a restriction enzyme. So the discovery of this restriction enzyme actually helped Paul Berg, Cohen and Boyer to make the first recombinant DNA molecule. Then once we have inserted or joined this gene of interest and finally forming a recombinant DNA molecule, then there will be a phosphodiester bond that is missing. That nick is sealed by an enzyme called lycase. So lycases are joining enzymes. Suppose these are this is the first DNA fragment and this is the second DNA fragment. And these two fragments are joined by the enzyme lycase and the process is called as lycation and the bond formed is the phosphodiester bond. In short, we have cut the plasmid vector using restriction enzyme, then inserted our gene of interest, finally forming a recombinant DNA molecule, and the nick is sealed by the enzyme lycase. Now we have a recombinant DNA molecule, that is DNA from two different sources, human DNA, that is insulin gene DNA, and also bacterial plasmid DNA, combined to form recombinant DNA. Step 2 is over. Now, step three is introduction of this vector into a suitable host. So we have the recombinant DNA molecule. We are introducing this recombinant DNA molecule into a host. The most common host is E. coli. Then other hosts include yeast, then cell lines, etc. The process is called as transformation. There are different gene transfer methods. Let's have a glance into different gene transfer methods. Physical gene transfer methods include electroporation, applying electric current, then microinjection using micromanipulators, introducing the gene into the host, then liposome-mediated gene transfer. Liposomes are lipid vesicles that can fuse with cells and can introduce the gene, then silicon carbon fiber-mediated gene transfer, ultrasound-mediated gene transfer, DNA transfer via pollen, then chemical gene transfer methods like polyethylene glycol mediated, calcium chloride mediated, dextran mediated gene transfer. All these chemicals cause some changes in the membrane permeability that allows the entry of this foreign insert or recombinant DNA into the cell and that will attach to the genome. DNA imbibition by cells, tissues, organs, etc. Then other methods includes uh, vector mediated methods like acrobacterium tumefaciens using acrobacterium. That's a very common method with high success rate in the case of gene transfer in plants. Then there are viruses are used as vectors like coliomavirus, Gemini virus, etc. in the case of plants. So we'll be selecting different methods depending on the host. Step 4 is selection of transformed host cell. So once the experiment, transformation experiment is complete, we will be having three different types of colonies. First one is non-transformed bacterial cell without any change. Second one, transformed bacterial cell with unchanged vector. As you see, that green insulin gene portion is missing. This is an unchanged vector. And the third one is 
transformed recombinant colonies with our gene of interest. So this is a colonies or this is a cell that we need to select. But we have different methods like antibiotic resistance in a selective medium, then visible characters, assay for biological activity, colony hybridization and plotting test. We'll be using different techniques to identify these recombinant transformed cells. Here let us discuss the use of antibiotic resistance medium in selecting this recombinant vector. This is PBR322 vector, widely used genetically engineered vector. So this is having an ORI that is derived from E. coli origin of replication, a sequence record for replicating inside the host. Then these are the two selectable markers, ampicillin resistance gene, and this is a second one, tetracycline resistance gene. So there are different restriction sites also for PST1, ECOR1, PAMH1. So here we are using a selectable marker, that is this ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene for the selection of recombinant transformed colonies. So a selectable marker is a region or a gene sequence of a vector that helps in the selection of recombinant colonies that contains our gene of interest. So let's take an example. Suppose this is a bacterium. If this bacterium has this vector inside, so this recombinant vector has ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene. So this bacterium can grow in both tetracycline and ampicillin containing medium. Hope you are clear. Now let us see how this selection works. So this vector has BAMH1 and SAL1 site that is on restriction site, then PV1 and PST1. So this is the ampicillin resistance gene region and this is the sequence for tetracycline resistance gene. Suppose we are inserting our gene of interest into this tetracycline gene region. So making a cut using restriction enzyme BAMH1, then introducing our gene of interest, so maybe insulin A gene gene. So what happens is once the gene is inserted, this tetracycline gene is not more functional or it becomes inactive and the process is called as insertional inactivation. So this helps in selection of recombinant colonies. Let me make it more clear. This inactivation of a gene upon insertion of another gene within that gene is called as insertional inactivation. Now let us see how this helps in selection of transformed colonies. So after transformation experiment, we have non-transformed colonies, then transformed with non-recombinant vector, then transformed with recombinant vector. We need to select these colonies. In the case of transformed with recombinant vector, as you see here, here both this ampicillin resistance gene and tetracycline resistance gene is functional. Therefore, these bacterial colonies can grow in both ampicillin and tetracycline containing medium. Whereas transformed with recombinant vector, here we have inserted our gene on tetracycline gene region. So this tetracycline gene is no more functional. So these colonies can grow only in ampicillin containing medium, but cannot grow in tetracycline containing medium. So we have tetracycline containing medium and ampicillin containing medium. So we'll be using replica plating to keep this master plate intact. So replica plating. So we will be taking an imprint. This is a velvet cloth. So and that imprint is placed upon the medium, antibiotic medium of our choice. The position of these colonies are exactly same as in the master plate so that we can compare that later to find out our recombinant colonies. So we have given a detailed video on this topic. You can refer that for more. So we'll be using replica plating by keeping the master plate intact. So what happens is this non-transformed can be easily eliminated as it cannot grow on tetracycline containing medium or ampicillin containing medium as it is devoid of the vector. Then transformed with non-recombinant vector can grow in both ampicillin containing medium and tetracycline containing medium. And finally, transformed with recombinant vector cannot grow in tetracycline containing medium as the gene has undergone insertional inactivation by the incorporation of our gene of interest, but it can grow in ampicillin containing medium. So the colonies that can grow only in ampicillin containing medium is the colony with our gene of interest or with recombinant vector. So comparing the position with the master plate, we can easily find the colonies with our gene of interest. So we can subculture it further very easily. So this is how we select our 
recombinant transformed colonies. Now this step is our selection of transformed host cell. We have selected using antibiotic resistance medium as or antibiotic resistance gene as selectable marker. And the final step is expression of insulin gene in the host. Our intention is if we are studying this gene for the first time, we need to have many copies to, for sequencing, for studying the function by muta mutagenesis. Then this plasmid replicate inside the host, making many copies. At the same time, this E. coli or bacteria will also replicate. So we'll be having many copies of that particular gene after gene cloning. So this is the basic purpose of gene cloning. Still, this method is used if we are studying a gene for the first time. If we know a gene very well, know the sequence, then we can make a primer and do the PCR for making copies of that particular gene. Then the second aspect of gene cloning is to produce the protein that is coded by this gene. Suppose here we have taken insulin as an example. So this is a therapeutically important protein. So our intention is to make the protein. So inside E. coli, this gene undergoes transcription and translation, finally forming the protein product or insulin that is further purified and used. So this will be cultured in large bioreactors for large scale production of insulin. So these are the five steps in Gene cloning, starting with identification and isolation of gene of interest, followed by introducing this gene into a suitable vector. And the third step is introducing this vector or recombinant DNA into a suitable host. This is followed by selection of transformed recombinant colonies. And finally, multiplication of making many copies of that gene or expression of that desired gene inside the host. Hope you are benefited from this video. Take care. Stay blessed. You are with biologyexamsforry.com. Thank you so much for your support.